Yay, I get to share this information with you. I'm really thrilled. Today's conversation is about the two worlds split, the division between worlds. We're going to get to understand exactly what's going on. But before we do, man, it's exciting to be given the nudge to share this information with you because that in itself means it's relevant now. I don't get to share information with you until it's relevant. So I get a nudge from the universe. I get the Galactics. They're my group of guides that are mostly off-planet beings that come to support me in not just absorbing and integrating it within myself, but in sharing it and relaying it with you. So when I get the nudge, it means it's relevant to us now. So the two worlds split as cataclysmic as it might sound, as apocalyptic as it might sound, is actually a very beautiful process. And we've been in training for it in earnest for the last two years, and that's going to make a lot more sense as we go. I'm also going to cover questions like, what happens to those people who might land up in a different world? Where are they going to go? Are they going to be okay? Should there be two worlds? And, and what exactly is all of this about? Your training began two years ago. Two years ago is where the polarization of humanity really began in earnest. And yeah, it's always been there, but that's where it became very, very in your face, so to speak. And what you would have seen is friends, family members, loved ones, people in your proximity. They suddenly had a very different reaction response to world events than you. This began to kind of put humanity in two separate camps, if you will. And actually, it wasn't really two separate camps. It was two separate frequencies. This polarity of perspective has been building and building and building. The one perspective is very much about respect. It's very much about respect of each individual sovereignty, respect of self, respect of others, uh, autonomy, love, because doesn't love and respect want to hold hands? Don't they belong together? There is, of course, another perspective, which is I'm right and you're wrong and your opinion doesn't matter and I'm going to intervene and impress upon you my will and you're going to conform to my will and my way of doing things. So there is respect for everybody else's opinion and there is my opinion only. There are these two different polarities and obviously I am really generalizing and I'm really summing them up if we go into detail into each of these perspectives there's a lot more to them but that's just the general opening definition that I want to give you and I know that you've experienced this now two years ago the training started like I said and it started like this it started with conflict of opinion and how you handled that conflict and you would have gone through so much you would have gone through trying to be understood trying to be heard, trying to make your point clear, trying to understand somebody else's point, trying to explain to them your perspective so that maybe they could shift their thinking and their ideas. There was a lot of crisis management that took place in those conversations. Some friendships ended, some marriages ended, some families were torn apart, split apart through this polarization of perspectives. What it was, was each person being given the opportunity to very clearly define the energy that they were choosing. But, you know, initially, it's like you could overlook it, couldn't you? You could overlook somebody's different perspective. You could overlook somebody's different viewpoint. But in time, it's gotten to be so different from your own. And you're not challenging it necessarily or fighting it or debating it. You're just looking at it going, man, that is such a world away from where I am. You would have found yourself more and more wanting to retreat into your own bubble. Kind of like saying, you know what, I've tried to reason with others. I've tried to be mis I've tried to be understood, although I was misunderstood. I've tried to explain my way, understand them, have compassion, etc., etc., etc. And more and more. It's become a lovely sanctuary to just be in my own space, to be in my own golden bubble of light and just be there. So less and less you would have wanted to interact with others or out there in the world more and more you would have wanted seclusion. And you know, this isn't a literal thing that everybody would want to close their door and shut themselves inside. You may have to go to work every day and deal with people, but it's that feeling that you have when you're in your own company of, Ah, oh, this feels good because here, inside of this bubble, I can just be me. You have no idea how imperative that was and still is. That's part of the training ground. You see, what we as light workers and light bearers have been tasked with is learning to fill up our own bubble of reality. 
and I've spoken about this occupy your presence we've dealt with it in my online community in a couple of calls filling up your own bubble which is really occupying your own reality in fullness so that nothing else can this is what humanity has been busy learning how to do some people have that bubble quarter filled half filled some are still fighting the fact that they want to be in a bubble because they think that they should be out there socializing in reality meeting people they, they feel maybe i'm depressed maybe there's something wrong with me but this is exactly the calling from the universe get into the bubble and fill it up now within that what i'm calling the cocoon or the bubble space right there was a misunderstanding and the misunderstanding was no one else like me or no one else with my opinions and perspectives exists and if they do there's only a couple of them i don't know others with my perspective or my opinion but the joke of it is that there were hundreds <laughs> you thought i was going to say hundreds of people no hundreds of thousands still no hundreds of millions of people each feeling the same thing and that was you know i don't know where these other people are of my wavelength of my school of thought the, the, the world seems to be populated by this other perspective which seeks to override which seeks to overpower which seeks to impede my free choice and my freedom of being the world seems populated by them but that was a misunderstanding an important one nonetheless because it would have driven each light bearer deeper and further into their own golden bubble so if you imagine this visual with me of a world filled 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 with these golden bubbles people inside golden bubbles but the joke of it all is each one of them thinking you know i'm i'm alone here the rest of the world's gone a bit nuts and here i am in my golden bubble as each one occupies that golden bubble to its fullest this is where it gets exciting as each one occupies the golden bubble to its fullest and everyone like i said is at varying stages of doing this that bubble you know what surface tension is if you have a water bubble and it has a surface tension that eventually breaks well that's what's happening but you're filling that bubble up from the inside you're filling it up by occupying your own space until the surface tension of that bubble pops because it can't hold you anymore there's in a sense your multi-dimensionality is beginning to radiate out because you've reached a frequency wherein that escaping of your multidimensionality is called for and simultaneous to that happening for you it's happening for others so now get the visual where multiple bubbles are beginning to pop or leak and connect they're beginning to ripple into each other and this is where we are right now this will still unfold so it's not today this is happening this will happen it is happening and it will still continue to happen at least over the next few weeks potentially maybe over the next few months could, could it be more than a year yeah, technically it could be i don't think it'll be that long but i'm not going to put time spans on anything so this is where we are we're we're reaching a critical mass with these golden bubbles where it becomes an overflow into the collective and as this new height we've always been overflowing but this is a particular gold frequency and a gold frequency is the frequency of truth humanity's truth is a literal gold frequency it is a literal gold standard so as this leaks into the collective consciousness it gives those holding the division consciousness yet another choice yet another opportunity to step into their inner light and, to, and they'll have to go through the same thing, which is, oh, I just want to isolate myself, seclude myself, put myself in a bubble, don't want to be in the world right now, I feel too challenged, it's too difficult, I'm triggering people, people are triggering me, etc, etc. All of this is about the two frequencies strengthening themselves. But the interesting thing is, that darker frequency, which is the division consciousness, that darker frequency, instead of becoming stronger, it's actually getting weaker. The light frequency, as the individual bubbles begin to merge, it's reaching a quantum impact. So the light is absolutely strengthening to the point that these two frequencies can no longer coexist in the same place and they were never meant to. We've got these two different 
frequencies. There's a time where they evolve each other through that process of kind of triggering each other, catalyzing each other. And what they're doing is they're catalyzing each other deeper and deeper into light or deeper and deeper into darkness. One of those two. So there is a time where these two polarized perspectives really serve each other. But eventually it comes to a point where in order to grow further now, there must be a separation of those two frequencies because the one's going to land up just holding the other one back. But at this point, I know a lot of people go, ah, what does that mean? Are people going to die? And what about my loved ones and are they going to be okay? Those who are given multiple opportunities to change their mind, to step into their golden bubble, to step into higher frequency, higher consciousness, love consciousness, but choose nonetheless not to take that path. They at the point of departure from this planet, in other words, when they pass on, they will not reincarnate to this planet because this planet is now moving to what we call New Earth, which is really a higher frequency expression of itself. They then become, and here's another visual, they then become a bubble of lesser light. I don't want to say a bubble of darkness. I want to say a bubble of lesser light. So it's not so bright. And that bubble pops out of Earth and it moves in towards the trajectory of a new 4D Earth or Earth-like planet, wherein those darker bubbles will begin to repopulate. And as they repopulate into what is technically a 4D reality, they're going to get to redo what we've just done, which is to bring ourselves to the brink of ascension. So they're getting a do-over because their soul's just not finished playing. Their soul's not finished. They want the experience of really getting it the way you've got it. They want the experience of really getting it. So they're going to head on over there. The little bubble leaves Gaia, Earth's consciousness, and it moves into what for them will be a much easier place to be, which is 4D. And from 4D, they're going to move into 5D. It's probably going to take a couple of thousand years for them to reach the next ascension point. It will be with much less intervention and interference, interference and darkness than we've currently experienced here on this planet. But that nonetheless is the trajectory. So I want you to imagine Earth as it is right now, populated by loads and loads and loads of very bright golden bubbles. And the odd little bubble, pop, leaving, leaving leaving, moving towards a 4D planet. So that's going on right now. And I must just say to you, because I'm sure somebody's going to ask me the question, so does that mean therefore that when somebody dies now, they transition into their next body, that they then are going to go into 4D? No, they are going to be given the choice at their death and departure from this life. They then are given a choice and that choice has already been made at the soul level to bubble off into that 4D reality or to bubble up into that 5D reality where we're all going to meet again in a place that we're going to call New Earth. So New Earth therefore is going to be populated by the time that we get there. That describes the two world split in the sense that we've got a faction of people, but wait for it because I'm going to get to that one climactic moment, which we call the solar flash. Now, we have this stream of bubbles leaving, kind of one at a time, as each person passes, and they've chosen to move into 4D Earth. We've got the others moving on to populate New Earth, but where is this New Earth place? It's right here. It is Earth as we currently know it in a higher form. And I hope that you've understood, as I talk about the division between worlds, I hope that you've understood that it is really a division of frequency. It is not a literal split. This world is not splitting. Earth is not splitting. It is not a breaking. It is not a cataclysm in that sense. But what happens at that one climactic moment which we call the solar flash that huge coronal mass ejection from the sun that triggers ascension which is a moment now many people are going to experience individual ascension in the same way that individuals die right now and they're going to move off into 5d that's also an individual ascension so many are going to be individually ascending but there's that one moment of planetary ascension and at that moment of planetary ascension, all that is left of those beings that didn't ever want to move into the 5D trajectory, that wanted a do-over to go into 4D, at that moment, the rest of them, those that are left, are going to move off into the population of their now existing 4D planet. And of course, those that are here are going to remain here, but they're going to move into a light body state. 
children who've not yet reached adulthood, just in case you were going to ask that, your children, if they've not yet reached adulthood, they will move with their parents normally. Uh, each individual case is exactly that. It's an individual case. So there can be individual sole contracts here. But generally speaking, the children go with the parents. So if the parents have already made their choice, the children go with that. But here's a bigger question that I think a lot of you are going to ask. How many? How many people are going to be moving into new earth or 5D reality? And how many people are bubbling off the planet into their new 4D reality? I don't have a number. I'm not meant to. I know that. I am not meant to give you dates and numbers and definitive things like that. But I can share with you my perspective, which could definitely change in time. So I'm not going to say to you that I'm always going to be of this opinion. And please know that this is all that I'm giving you. I'm giving you my perspective based on where I am right now. Right now, when I look at it, it looks like at least two thirds of the planet move off into 5D. It looks like approximately one third moves off to populate that 4D reality. Can that change? Absolutely, yes. Can it change at the last minute? Most definitely, yes. Now, I know that there are teachers who say things like everybody's going to ascend, nobody's going to get left behind, uh, or, or variations thereof. It's not about anybody being left behind. This is about respecting individual choice. There are those who are quite simply not yet done. They must have the freedom to go and redo. We cannot look at their choice as if it's a bad thing. We can only look at their choice and say, hey, that's your choice. Good for you for making one. There is something I haven't spoken about, though, and that is what about the dark darkness? Like, what about those that don't want 4D or 5D? I want to tell you there's a very limited number of them. We call those people beings of darkness. They are not necessarily human. They are not necessarily earthlings. As far as I can see, all human beings will be moving into either a 4D or a 5D reality. There are a lot, more than you might think, there are a lot of non-human beings that look like human beings that are on this planet they generally have very high functioning roles in society maybe they are politicians maybe they are pop stars maybe they are monarchs those people i'm not talking about because i'm talking about earthlings people of planet earth who are making their choice into 4d 5d there are those beings who will not want either and mostly they have already left the planet or in the process of leaving. They want to and will need to leave before the great solar flash. They will want to and need to do that. Some of them quite desperately want to get off right now. Uh, and others of them will be helped off beforehand. But as always, I want to leave you with another follow on video over here. This is a little pep talk from me that came through. Another little nudge that came through from the universe. And I'm going to share that with you. I think it's going to be for a lot of you to listen to right now. And to help you make sense of your world. Lots of love, everyone. Bye-bye for now.